Power number two displayed at the throne. Hard to believe he had that hidden in him. Lord Melchior said that number one was full of untapped potential as well. If I have the talent to use it. Uh, Teresa, my lady, you seem angry. Me? At what? At me, for running away and joining Velvet. Oh, that? I was careless. An enemy stole a tool of mine. I'm merely frustrated at my own incompetence. A tool. I don't care what happens to me now. Not as long as I can save Oscar. I'm the one who hurt your precious brother. And you're asking for my help now? Yes, you hurt him. You scarred his face, and his honor, and his heart. Still holding a grudge then? Well, at least you won't be able to kill me in my sleep. With no Malachim, I'm an ordinary woman. How could I threaten the Lord of Calamity? I'm painfully aware of my own weakness. Good. Try to keep out of the way, then. Lady Teresa, Velvet isn't so different from you. She had a little brother, she... I know all about the Lord of Calamity, but none of that matters to me. As powerless as I am now, this is the only path for me. It's the only way I can save Oscar. Lady Teresa...
Joachim are just tools. What are you brooding over? I know! Velvet, Eleanor, or Teresa? You're not sure whose little brother you want to be, eh? In that case, I assure you I'm the kindest of the lot. The cruelest, most devious. That's not what's on my mind. There's something I need to say to Lady Teresa. Something you wish to say? Then speak, number two. That's just it. I'm not number two. I'm... I'm Lafayette. Lafayette? It's the name Velvet gave me. It's very important to me. Something can be important to you? Yes. I have feelings. You see, Malakim are not tools. Very well. I shall call you Lafayette from now on. Thank you, Lady Teresa. You're kinder than you look, my dear Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. You misunderstand. With so much at stake, I don't want to rock the boat. Velvet, tell me what you know about Teresa and Oscar. I want a clearer picture of what they can do. All right. Teresa and Oscar are... I can give you the lowdown on everything, Abby! Lady Teresa and Oscar are the best of the best, even among the Praetors. Some call them the Consuls. There are only around a hundred Praetors in the world, so we're talking very elite. Anyone called a Consul is going to be adept at both fighting and leadership. They are key figures entrusted with responsibility for major cities and institutions. The fighting part is all we have to worry about. Are they better than you, Eleanor? Yes. I was a Primus, which is a full rank below them. I could never overcome Teresa's arts or Oscar's swordsmanship in our practice battles. When they were still trainees, they worked together to wipe out dozens of demons in a single night! After that, Lord Melchior kept a close eye on them. Appreciate it. I'll be on my guard. Together, they sound like a real threat. Thankfully, we're only after Oscar alone. But Oscar has mastered a new art developed by Lord Melchior! You can count on it being a nasty one. You really do know a lot about this stuff. It's a little suspicious. You... you think so? Well, I was at the Abbey, so... Why don't you call him Lord Oscar? That's what's bothering you? It's because we're both so popular with the ladies. I consider him a rival.
It's a beetle. Yeah. Uh, a Lionel Giant Thunderstag beetle, to be exact. Why do they always have such awkward names? I... I think it's a cool name. <sighs> I've never been able to figure out why boys are so drawn to these things. Huh? What's the matter? Didn't you want to see it? Uh, yeah. Thanks. When he was little, Oscar was always running around the woods collecting bugs. He'd get so into it, it was never long before he'd trip and hurt himself. Did you grab bugs for him? Yes, I thought they were gross. But I was much taller than him, and I had the reach. Once, he gave me a whole pile of cicada shells as his way of thanking me. I just screamed. I'm sure he just wanted you to know how he felt. I can relate to that. Rather unusual for a Moloch like you to contemplate such things. Well, I try to. It's just really hard sometimes. It's hard for people too. Sometimes it feels insurmountable. And yet we can't give up. Sometimes you just have to say what you believe in your heart. Even if you're not good at saying it. What I believe. Fee, hurry up already! What were you two talking about? Nothing. You said found a new stag beetle, did you? Yeah, Lady Teresa caught it for me. Ooh, those pincers are sharp. Eisen, take a look at this fine specimen of a stag. Wait, I believe that might be a two-horned rhinoceros beetle. Listen, you two. If you're gonna get in another fight over this, I'll just say it's a new type of drone beetle. You wouldn't. You've really figured us out, huh? <laughs> Eleanor, you didn't make him say that just now, did you? I did not. I've made a pact with him as a vessel, but he isn't tethered to me. A Moloch, acting so human. I used to think that way. Malachim possessing free will just like humans? It was inconceivable. But meeting Lafayette and Aizen taught me the truth. 
They laugh in joyful times, and cry in sad times. Their stomachs even growl too. Their stomachs growl? Now I take it as a matter of course that not only Malachim, but demons and Therians too, have their own thoughts and feelings. I thought you hated demons. I certainly still do, but now I feel something besides just hate. Malachim with free will? Demons and Therians as well? You must have sensed that in Laffy said, or you wouldn't have caught that beetle for him. When you saw his beaming face, it must have reminded you of when Oscar was a young boy. Am I correct? This conversation's over. Teresa, be honest. Isn't there something wrong with the Abbey using a dangerous experimental art out in the field? Oscar's the one who decided to go through with it. Don't presume to know anything about who he is.